Today I'm going to show you how to install a reliable diamond crossover. I mentioned in a previous video that I wanted to have the facility that if a train came up the fast line from town, it could come in to platform two or to platform one. But to come into platform one, I would need to install a crossover. So how do we install it? Well, we have one uh, right hand medium radius there. We put another right hand medius, medium radius there. And then somehow between the two, we pop in this diamond crossover, kind of like that. And that allows me then to take a train that's coming out of Chadwick Central um, and instead of going straight on, it can then divert straight through this diamond crossing into platform one. And then if it's a DMU kind of train, then from platform one, it can then run, run straight back into town by uh, changing the points and it would then go back out on the, the other line and then pick up onto here. Sort of job done really, makes sense. Of course the other thing I'll need is another couple of uh, tortoise point motors and these will fire at the same time because these two points will naturally need to change together. So it saves me one of the channels on one of my DS64 uh, point controllers. So I need to rip up some of this track, um, fit the point motors and take it from there. Uh, which leads us on really to um, this long crossing. Because on YouTube a few people have mentioned that they have problems with this, uh, this SL94 Insular Frog Streamline Long Crossing, what I thought I would do is I'd run this sound, class, uh, sound fitted Class 37 through this long crossing to see if there's any issues with it. So to do that what I've done is I've connected up my old Dynamis onto uh, one of the tracks and then doubled the, the same feed across onto the others so all the, these four tracks and the diamond crossing have the same feed. And using my class 37 what I thought I'd do is, is use that with the sound on um, and run it through the, uh, the, the, the crossing. Now I'm on speed 5 um, of 126. So clearly there was no issues in that direction, so all I'll do is just run it through the other way um, and let you know if there's any problems with that.
Well, there's clearly no problem with that. I'll just run my shunter through, but this might not necessarily be um, an accurate demonstration because the shunter has actually got a small stay alive in it. So we'll whack this one up to, say, speed uh, 20 and see how this reacts. Might even send it in the right direction. Of course, it is the 040s and the 060s that always have the problems with um, insular frog rather than electro frog. And as I suspected, I didn't think this would have much trouble. And I just lift him off and put him on the other. Oops. I thought I'd just run this little bubble car through and see how this reacts with the long crossing. And again, this one doesn't have any problems either. So, I think we're ready to go. I shall... Um, solder the cables uh, on the droppers onto the bottom of this and then we'll crack on. So the first thing to do if you want to modify your point is to snip these connector, uh, connector wires on the back of these Pico Electrofrog points. There's nothing wrong with the points to start with but it does make um, for more consistent running in the long term if you're weathering track and that kind of thing. And also when you need, then need to um, solder on a couple of dropper wires that short across both both uh, the tracks on both sides to give you better running. I've done other videos in this and you can uh, you can see how I've done it. I'll also come up with a new um, soldering video I think next week. On the diamond crossing I needed to cut away a little bit of some of the webbing um, to get a better uh, better access uh, for the soldering and here you can see I've used a helping hand to hold both the uh, frog cable and the green cable and wiring onto it and of course you need four hands you need the soldering iron and the solder so you can see it's much easier if you can uh, use another device to try and keep all these things still when you do soldering as I said I'll try and put a video together for next week so I've now started to use a different uh, soldering technique with uh, 60 40 uh, tin to lead and here you can see I'm putting on the dropper cables on the points themselves and you can see the way I'm bonding those two cables together. And then give it a little tug to make sure it stays on. Make sure you've got your red and your black cables the right way around because obviously you're wiring them if you like upside down because you've turned them over. I always uh, tin the underside of the track before I start to solder so just heat the track up with a soldering iron, drop a bit of solder on there and uh, that should do quite well. When you come to put the track on, give it a little bend and then I'm afraid you have to get to paste it on here really. It's very difficult to get your, all your hands in and the solder in at the same time and hopefully you end up with the cables in the right place the right way around. We're using tortoise point motors. I need to remove the spring from the, uh, from the uh, point to allow free access for the um, switch blades to run through. And I also cut off at this stage the, the extended sleepers that you use for Pico surface mounted points. Then I mark out on the, uh, on the cork below where I need to drill the holes for the, um, the, the frog cable and obviously the main cables, the, black, the red and black cables that I've just uh, soldered on. So once they're in place, out comes the Makita, drill those holes through um, and then obviously thread those cables through. These do seem very, very long, but 
Um, it's to do with block detection and computer control. So once they're in, thread those cables through. Hopefully making sure that there isn't a, a beam underneath, a cross member, when you start drilling. These should all then line up and as you can see this isn't such a bad fit and just make sure it lies true with the rest of the track. Now obviously you can't just do one point then the other point and hope that the diamond crossing meets in the middle. So with this one in first but not glued, like I said just the cables are through the centre of the board um, and using metal joiners here I need to offer up the diamond crossing and I've got insulated sleepers on every uh, junction um, for both the, for the DCC and the um, um, block detection. So now what I need to do is somehow thread this one onto all four lines, which I'm sure, oh, no, it might be easier than we thought. So that's where it needs to be. Now I need to get those ca these cables here under the board. So we need to mark out those for those holes to be drilled. And this time I'm going to drill four holes for these. So it should be there. And there, now I need to mark out exactly where this point motor goes. And to that end, I always use a Pico track pin. And by using one of these, I think they're SL14s, they actually fit through the hole. No, they don't, you have to cut the end off, then they fit through the hole. Snips. So what I do is I put the blades in the central position, drop the track pin through the hole, give it a tap, always use the right tool for the right job, and then when I lift this point up the track pin should stay where it is. And then I can drill the hole for the point motor and the four holes for these cables. So I shall whip this off again. And there are those holes, there are those marks. And there's the pin for the rail joiner. Sorry, for the point motor. So hopefully now when I pick this up, that pin, or at least the mark, should stay where it is. Let's just mark it on the side so in case we do lose our position. For the pin, for this. There's where the hole was. Pop it back in a moment. Okay. So now I need four holes here for those. Check underneath. And there is a cross member there, but it'd be hard to see if it's in the way. So I'll drill the four holes and see what happens. And then a 10 mil hole there for the tortoise point motor. These three have gone straight through, but that one there is actually in the joist. So 
So I think what we'll do is we'll just march that one on a little bit. And then cut the cork where it'll go through. Beautiful. Stanley knife. And that little channel will allow the cable to run into that in a hole. Okay, next we need to mark out this one here for the 10 mil drill. There is actually a drilling template for uh, tortoise point motors. Normally you just place this down uh, on the underside, up on the underside of the board and it shows you where to drill and they recommend a 6 mil drill but I always find that a 10 mil gives you um, somewhat more slack. Right, I need to clean this area up and uh, get the point motor on and get back to you. So I've been under the baseboards and I've secured the first tortoise point motor in place. And as you can see, I definitely have been under the baseboards. Call cool, that hurt. Um, and now it comes to gluing down the first point and also the diamond crossing. So what do I use? A couple of weeks ago, I did a video on whether we should glue or pin track. Um, and while there isn't a definitive answer, what I have learned from that and the, um, the replies I got from you, the kind of the, the viewing people, as it were, um, was proposing using copy decks rather than impacts adhesive. So I've moved away from using this kind of thing uh, to glue the track down. I now use copy decks. And the reason for that is it's, um, it's a latex kind of rubbery based um, glue and the transmission of sound into the baseboard is reduced because it is a kind of a rubber and you don't get that transmission of sound. So that's what I've gone for. Um, and it also, it's very grabby, if you know what I mean. So once you've coated the underside of the point and the baseboard um, and you leave for kind of 15, 20 minutes, when you put it in place, it holds it in place. It doesn't move around. You don't have to sort of put books on it or anything. So it's, uh, it is very, very sticky. And if you've made a mistake, once it's gone off, you can get a little trowel underneath it and lift it back up again and start again so it's no big shakes so um, if you're not if you haven't tried copy decks i'd kind of give it a go it's quite good stuff and it's not toxic um, and if you remember from your school days it smells of fish and it does it really does smell of fish so what i do now is i'll coat both of those um, and then glue those into place so here's the copy decks then get the lid off that And it comes with a brush and rest assured that the brush is too small to get to the bottom of the pot so uh, I'm sure we'll figure something out and then all you do is paint this stuff on oh, make a note of the time which is 20 to 5 because you need to leave it for 15 to 20 minutes and so you give it a good coating same as on this point. Obviously keep it away from the, the action of the point. The last thing you want to do is glue that together. Ba -da -ba -ba. That'll do it. Head onto the baseboard. So that must come through around about here. And then down here a bit, and I imagine up there a bit. Same for this point here. And whilst, just like PVA, whilst it look, appears to be white, it dries clear. Uh, 
And I think that'll do us. So, I'll see you in 20 minutes. So that's about 18 minutes gone by and here you can hopefully see the armature from the tortoise point motor below and here is a track setter uh, gauge to try and make sure everything stays straight. So we'll pop this one into position, thread the, the um, armature from the point motor through the hole, which is clearly easier said than done. Come here little darling. And then go for the fish plates. Pull the cables through. And then hopefully it should settle in place. I can't run this track setter right through because it's obviously a point. I think that's it in place. No, it's not quite because that, that fish plate's not right. Right, that's it. Okay. Now I said it's quite grabby, so you push it into place and, uh, and there you kind of are really. I'm just going to test the action of that point motor to make sure it goes all the way across. And yes, it does. Take a look from the other side to make sure it's straight. Looks pretty straight. Let's put it, just change that point motor again. I think we just need to push it that way a smidge. And then we need to bring this one into play. There they are. We'll pull the cables through. Give him a good push down. Just want to make sure those fish, those fish plates really are lined up and they are there. Sometimes quite difficult to see. Check it straight. <laughs> Looks pretty good. So there we have it. All I've got to do now is to do the uh, next point that goes in here, which is this one here, and uh, I mean it's quite straightforward really, it's just a repeat per strip procedure of that one. So when it's all in, I'll get back to you. Well, as you can probably tell, because my head is starting to heal, a couple of days have gone by since that last clip, and now I've, I've uh, installed this point but haven't glued it down, and the point motor is on the baseboard underneath. But I thought before I glue this down, I just want to show you how I align these. Now I've mentioned previously about using the Pico six foot weigh gauge and these two lines here are at the recommended streamline uh, distance and these two also. But the centre two I've deliberately put to the set track distance and that's because in the centre of here somewhere I'm going to have a support uh, for a footbridge. So because these two aren't at the standard set track centres, these two um, points can't join so this left this right hand point and the diamond crossover can't actually join so I need to insert a very small piece of track 
What I wanted to show you was by using the track setter straight, what you can do then is by lining it up with a point and putting it into the into those rails and into that of the diamond point, it then gives you the correct alignment between the diamond point and the turn of the and the turn, sorry, the diamond crossover and the turn of the point. So you need to get these dead straight because the last thing you want to do is install the point to find it doesn't actually line up exactly with the diamond crossover. If this is a little bit out, that's not too bad. You can always reshuffle it, you know, in, down the main line or back down this way. But it's crucial that these are dead right. So now I know they're right, I can mark them out and glue those down and then manufacture a little bit of track to go in here and then slide the fish plates across. Well, I've cut myself another piece of track um, to go inside there. I've done a trial fit and that's fine. Um, underneath here, there are two metal rail joiners and on here, there are two insulated rail joiners. This one's because it's DCC and you need to isolate the frog. Um, and this one because it'll end up being computer controlled. So I'll need to know when the locomotive or the train leaves this point and goes on to the next area, hence the, uh, the isolation. So all I need to do now is to put some copy decks underneath and on top um, and glue that into place and slide the rail joiners along and then obviously pop the track setter in um, to make sure it all stays in alignment as the, dry, as the glue dries. So 20 minutes has gone by, so let's try and slide these, this, uh, this piece into these insulated fish plates. that in, drop it down and then pull the steel fish plates onto the crossing there's the first one and there's the second one and then, of course, what you need to do is just check they are on properly both sides. Yep. And then with that track setter gauge is to pop it in and make sure it holds it all while the uh, glue goes off. And we should have perfect alignment. So all I really need to do in this area now is put in those missing rails. So, so I've got one two, three, four, five tracks to go in and then these three boards will be complete and I can move on to the next phase. So it's now a day later and this section's complete. Here is the, um, the completed good siding. Then we have the, um, the upline that goes into platform two, uh, the fast up, the fast down and the down line for platform one and of course the all important crossing. So let's put some coaches through it and see how it runs. And these Mark 3s, along with uh, quite a lot of other rolling stock, go through absolutely fine. What I do like in particular about this crossing is that the turns aren't that severe, so the coaches don't kind of, kind of buckle up on each other. The angles um, between the two coaches stays you know, reasonably small. So there we have it, a little bit of a success story there. If you're using code 75 rather than code 100 Pico track, then please don't buy the, in, the initial frog diamond crossing, which I have. Make sure you buy the electro frog because then with locos with small wheelbases, you're going to get better running and a more reliable service from them. The next set of videos I've got coming up, hopefully the I think the next one's on soldering. The one after that will be on DCC decoders. And after that, then this should be all wired up and be able to run trains um, on these three boards. So uh, I'll bring you up to date with that and also the building um, put together the platforms. So we've got lots to look forward to. 
In of course the meantime, please don't forget to like and subscribe and there should be a link to a video here and here and please don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell icon and you'll get a notice when my next video is out. So until then, thanks a lot, great take care and bye bye.